Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review is brought to you in part by Rogers Hobby Center in Saginaw, Michigan, where the fun begins. This review covers the Turbo Vet. It's a 1 20th scale kit from MPC number 0755. Now, MPC started a series of what are called C3 Corvette models back in 68 in 1 20th scale. Released in 79, this annual carried over some parts from previous versions, but we can have some fun and build it as the twin turbocharged version with side pipes, a roll bar, and a high rise hood. Add the decal graphics uh, from the kit and some numbers from the parts box, and we've got a nice looking track car. Molded in 113 parts in red, black, clear red, clear, and chrome, it's an intermediate model kit um, but just about anybody uh, should be able to build this with a few practices uh, under the belt now the usual 80 mold issues with heavy sprue attachment points parting lines and the like uh, are avail are evident but uh, the only real fitment issue i found was the uh, front bumper the kits rated for uh, ages 10 and above and except for the turbo plumbing uh, interference you know that you'll find when you put the engine together the rest of it shows no real uh, construction issue problems the larger scale makes detailing very tempting and when you're done the car is nine and a quarter inches long three and a half inches wide and two and a half inches high oh that's a uh, uh, newt he's the program director here and sounds like he wants to uh, ask a question what what do you got there newt Hey, that's a pretty cool looking car. Was that a real racer? Uh, no, this uh, is really just patterned after the 1980 Corvette and just included some uh, some really snazzy graphics, but it kind of would be typical of like some of the SCCA racers that were prevalent back in the day. Why is the model a different color than the one on the box? Well, that's a great observation, Newt. Uh, and that's the beauty of modeling. You can build your model any way you like. You can make it any color you want, and you can do anything to it. Uh, the pliability of styrene and, and the possibility of aftermarket stuff uh, gives you endless possibilities to make the model however you like. Here are the contents for the kit. As you can see, they're pretty nicely laid out, and uh, they've got uh, both uh, the chrome, black, and red um, part uh, delineations for the various types. Now we'll be using mostly um, liquid cement, sometimes super glue for finicky parts or white glue for glass. Uh, and as always, heed the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines when using any of the products you see or hear used in the review. Here are the decals for the kit. As you can see, the um, backing paper is yellowed, but didn't really bother the uh, decals themselves. Now these great big large decals are going to be a challenge. You'll need quite a bit of warm water and setting solution to set those in place properly. Also, you may want to consider cutting them uh, into segments so that they're easier to manage, but that's up to you. With this kit, we're going to start with the tires, and here's the parts that you'll need for the wheel and tire assemblies. Now, even though they're hollow, they're stiff enough that the wheel fronts and backs uh, should be assembled in a sandwich form uh, individually, as the completed wheel assembly is difficult to squeeze through the tires. Now the wheel backs can be painted aluminum. And remember, you need to scrape the chrome plating or even paint uh, from areas that you want to join with glue. You can see once the uh, parts are assembled that you can see right through the, um, the holes, the ports there in the uh, front of the wheels. So paint the inside of the wheel back silver to kind of look like, um, you know, like uh, brake rotors. Next, we'll start with the uh, engine components. So you can see here all the pieces you'll need to um, put the engine together. And that's uh, for the uh, unit with the custom twin turbos, the valve covers, and the oil pan. Next, we'll start working on the engine assembly. Apply glue to both halves of the block and wait a few seconds for the plastic to soften and then clamp the halves together. And once dry, the excess hardened glue can be scraped off or sanded smooth on the exposed areas. Now scrape the torque converter cover and the tranny sump pan so that uh, no longer have a seam. And then 
the seam should be sanded lightly on the transmission case as it actually had a seam on the real car. You see the unit here after priming and uh, it no longer has a seam on the torque converter cover or the trans sump pan. Now assemble the engine in sequence uh, according to the instructions which by the way are at the end of this review. And here's the completed engine. The instructions will show you how the spark plug wires which I've done here uh, can be routed uh, using some fine wire. And the big block Corvettes used uh, shielded spark plugs so I painted those wires aluminum color to make it look like a braided covering. The block, the heads, the intake manifold, they were all Chevy orange. And the uh, small block engines were originally painted blue, but since we're pretending this is a big block, uh, I went with an orange like the big blocks were, and the transmission is painted aluminum and the fan belt is flat black. And uh, remember to remove that paint and chrome uh, plating before you try to glue parts together. And next we'll work on the interior, so um, get the parts out uh, that we used to assemble that. You can see those here. There were no real surprises on the interior and you can see it finished here and there's a lot of details so uh, after painting the floor uh, I used uh, one shot tan that's number 117 that's a brand uh, and medium brown 114 on the door panels seats and uh, the dash and one shot tan uh, on the interior when assembled. Now the carpet is a doe skin and the interiors were slightly darker than the rest so I added a little medium brown to the mix for that. Carpet areas were then topped with a flat clear and the tan areas were coated with a semi flat clear. The console plate in this kit is too small for an 80 console but by painting the entire top it kind of looks correct. Now paint the uh, turn signal lever and the ignition switch on the steering column silver. Add uh, a stripe of silver around the top of the console and around the center gauge areas. Now the gauges have nice detail and a little white pencil will bring this out. Now, handle, uh, the handle on the parking brake and the shift boot and the knob were flat black. Now paint the uh, pedal assembly flat black too. The top portion of the uh, dash was painted flat black too. And you can add the accessory helmet uh, to the location of your choice. I painted mine to match the exterior color of the car. Now paint the roll bar to match the interior color. And then add some flat black to the padding. Locate these pieces from the kit to start building the chassis. I painted the uh, frame rails and the front suspension semi-gloss black. The floorboard area is flat black. And I painted the rear differential housing and cross-member aluminum to look more like the uh, new style rear ends that were introduced in 80. Now the disc brakes are silver and the springs, sway bars, rear half shafts, spindles and tie rods are painted steel color. The rear shocks are painted yellow. Now don't forget to scrape the chrome and paint before gluing. And now we can start to mate some of the uh, previously assembled uh, portions and paint the firewall flat black and the drive shaft steel. The turbo version might not be a good choice for beginners as slipping the completed chassis with the engine installed is a little bit tricky. You'll need to do a little manipulating and finagling there without trying to break something. Now the turbo plumbing is pretty um, gainly and not wanting to clear the front inner wells, but if you're careful, you can slip it into place. Now go ahead and assemble these units according to the instructions, including the wheels, just uh, uh, and the radiator, firewall, etc. Remember to align the uh, drive shaft with the rear end as you're putting the engine into place as well. Now um, the wheels, of course, they'll go onto the hubs that are snapped onto the uh, spindles there. So be careful to um, put those in position and make sure that the wheels are, are straight and true. And now we'll go to the um, uh, body and assemble the front and rear pans. And as you can see, there's some uh, black markers along the fender wells there, the tops uh, where you're, there's some uh, parting lines that you're gonna have to carefully remove with some sanding sticks and or scrapers. Now the fit of the front bumper and, and uh, front pan there are, are not very good. I guess I would suggest um, after I put it together, uh, if you build this model, take a little bit off between the uh, uh, floor pan where it meets the body there uh, on the top of the floor pan and, and so that the bumper rises up a little bit higher. It's, it's about uh, 80 thousandths low. Uh, when you put it into position right uh, out of the box. Once the uh, 
the seam was cleaned up, um, I, I primed the body with some gray primer and then sanded it and smoothed everything over as well as I could up front there and painted it with uh, one shot silver that's number 193. Once the paint was dry I added my decals. Remember you'll need plenty of warm water and setting solution for those big stripes. And I also came up with some uh, numbers and roundels um, for the uh, race number uh, from my parts box. Now, after that, I sealed the whole thing in with some clear coat. With the hood in place, you'll trap those hood hinges in between the body and the fender with the fender liners there. They kind of act as a, a limiter for those um, hinges. I painted the headliner and the sun visors uh, with the tan color for the interior. And then using some white glue, uh, the front and rear glass were added to the body. And then paint the rest of the surrounding body some flat black color. Now the front grills there, of course, are black, and then uh, paint the parking lights in orange color, and then the side marker lights orange and the cornering lights are white. Now you can add the four taillight lenses. The uh, innermost ones, uh, the center taillights, have the backup lights in the center of the two taillights, so paint those white, and then paint the rear side marker lights maroon color the parts uh, from the box for the side exhaust and um, remember to clean up any attachment points best you can and touch that up with silver or chrome pen and uh, get these ready uh, for assembly by scraping the, um, the chrome off where the parts will be glued together. Uh, the connection for the side pipes weren't really correct. Um, these were side pipes that were made for true four tube headers um, and after uh, scraping the chrome the side exhausts then were assembled. Now you can see in the picture here they used a, um, a collector to add to the cast iron exhaust to uh, connect up with the headers. <laughs> that was their solution um, but um, that's how she goes together so uh, remember scrape that uh, paint or chrome off before you glue all this together. Once the rest of uh, the body is done it's time to add the side mirrors I wait till the last because they tend to get knocked off easily with their tiny little attachment points. Now I'll uh, lift that hood up and add the upper radiator hose there. It's a semi-gloss black. You won't have too many parts left over. Here are the stock exhausts and uh, the other hood and some decals. But uh, for the most part, this is a single purpose build. And so these go right into the old stash. Well, there you have it. These 120 scale Corvette kits uh, are really head turners because they're a little larger than life and with those graphics they really stand out. Now, there was an issue there with the uh, front, uh, front end fit, but I think that could be remedied by uh, just taking a little off of the top of the mating surface for the bumper. And uh, once you've got this thing put together, uh, it's ripe for detailing all over the, uh, the entire thing. So if I were you, I'd buy one and put it on my shelf. Well, we hope you like this step-by-step -step premium model kit review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can do that by clicking on the icon on the lower right of any of our reviews. Or find us on Facebook or our website, rightonreplicas.com. Thanks.